You can get started today using BitFocus Companion to create buttons that contain actions to control, well, everything. Even if you don't have one of these physical Stream Deck control surfaces, we don't want this to be a barrier of entry. In this video, we're gonna talk about using an emulator from the browser to do exactly what these Stream Decks do for free. Here in my computer, I'm gonna go to the top right, click Show Hide Window, and we're gonna bring up this companion BitFocus window. And in the bottom left, launch GUI to bring up the graphical user interface, and that'll load in the browser as a reminder. If it doesn't load like this, maybe your IP address is wrong. Let's go ahead and go back to that screen. And I wanna make sure that this thing is picking up an IP address so we can go ahead and change it from here. Sometimes you gotta reboot it if you've gone from one IP address to the other. So it'll say unavailable. So let's go ahead and just change it to localhost. A 127.0.0.1 always is the fullback address. It points back to the computer that you're on. Let's go ahead and quit this. And we'll go ahead and go down to my toolbar and launch companion again. And now it's back up in the top right. I'm gonna go show hide window. And now you can see that it's running on this IP address and we're gonna change it to our wireless so we can now launch the user interface. Okay, so there we go. So here in Companion, we're going to use an emulator, which is a feature built into Companion to show the interactive surface layout in the browser. So no paid apps are required. We can use our iPad or an iPhone or an Android or any kind of computer to connect to this IP address and see this page from the browser. From the main companion page where we edit buttons, we can shift plus click to trigger a button or we can test each button by clicking on the button and going to test. Neither of these methods are good for running an event because unless you wanna be inside of this screen, which you don't, we have to manually go navigate to the page that we wanna be on, whereas on the Stream Deck control surface, all we have to do is click on the camera control page and it takes us immediately to, there you go, camera uh, control page two. So there we go, it brings us to this page. So let's go step by step and create an emulator. I'm gonna go down to interactive buttons, click on emulator, and I'm gonna delete my emulator. Let's see here. Let's go to surfaces, and I'm gonna go delete this surface. There you go. So I'm gonna go down to interactive buttons, emulator, and now it says no emulators have been created. What am I supposed to do with that? I have been confused on this screen more times than I would care to admit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to surfaces, configured. There's also discover, which is for finding satellite instances of companion. And then there's remote, which is more for control surface, MIDI controllers and things. Let's go to configured. And you can see here that I've got one uh, Stream Deck XL. It's currently offline because it's not connected via USB. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add emulator and we'll just call this test emulator. And it has an ID, click add. So now that we have this, we can go into settings and we can change all the settings that we can normally change on our Stream Deck, our physical Stream Deck that's connected. We can set the current page to main menu. We can set the startup page if we want to, uh, to set it to whatever. We can also, let's see here, open it up directly by clicking on this, or we can delete it. So now let's go down to interactive buttons, emulator, and now we can test emulator. Okay, so there we go. Now. I'm not gonna hold shift or anything. I'm just gonna click on the camera control page. Remember, it takes that second, but it takes us straight to the camera control page. So this is interactive. I can click menu to go back to the menu. So that is really cool. That is literally how you create an emulator and set it up inside of Companion. And now all we have to do is access it from our other devices. Now let's go ahead on my phone and I'm on the same Wi-Fi. I'm gonna open up the browser. I'm just gonna use Chrome here because that's what I normally use. And I'm gonna type in 192.168.1.99 colon 8000. Okay, that's gonna bring up the companion page, but I want the emulator. So let's go ahead to slash emulator. There we go. And now we have this page, we can click test emulator. And now we have our emulator from our browser. And you can see here, I can camera control, menu, and it actually does the same thing on here, on here. So, because this is the same surface. So if you wanted to set up multiple devices like this, you would have to set up multiple emulators to make sure that they're separate, they have separate IDs and they're controlling the system separately. 
but that is really cool to be able to do that from here. So let's go ahead and save this. So this is my device that I'm gonna hand to my volunteers. I wanna make sure that they can easily access this. So on the web page, we're gonna go click the up arrow, which is the share button. And then I'm going to select add to home screen. There you go. So it'll just be companion, add. So now I have a button on my home screen that says companion. And when I click on that, it'll bring up the emulator by going to that IP address. So if this IP address ever changes, I'm not gonna be able to open it anymore, but until it changes, that is perfect. With this emulator control method, everything literally works just like it's a physical control surface. And this also means that our internal surface set to page actions that allow buttons to navigate us through our menu system that we built in my other video. Go check that out if you're interested in building a menu system inside of Companion to navigate between pages. It's really annoying. We've got all these pages you have to tab through to get to the next and the next and the next. Companion can do it for you with that internal set to page action. This whole setup requires minimal setup so that you can begin learning BitFocus Companion well before you're purchasing your first controller. This method is really good for me because my iPad is officially too old to receive a new iOS update. Plus, I've arrived to the point where I can't even install app updates, so any app solution is not really gonna work that well for me. I want to mention here that the IP address of this companion emulator can be connected to from anywhere on your network. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your main companion computer has a static IP address just to prevent the IP address of the companion computer from changing. I don't wanna to have to go in and change the .99 to .57 every other week because the IP address updated from DHCP. There are two options to prevent this from being a problem. On our Mac or a PC, you can give your computer a static IP address, whereas right now it's set to DHCP so that it gets a new IP address from any network it is on. Whereas if it's static, then it's gonna have to stay on one network. Not the phone, the computer running companion, the device we want to connect our phone to over the network. So to do this, I can click on the control button up here, go to, let's say, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi settings. From this page, I'm gonna go down to network. So whether I'm on Wi-Fi or an ethernet connection, the network that I'm connected to is gonna pop up on this page. I'm gonna click on Wi-Fi. I'm gonna go to details on the wireless access I'm accessing. I'm gonna go down to TCP IP, and I'm gonna set using DHCP to manually. Now I can give it a static IP address, and I can also make sure that my subnet and router settings are the same. If you have questions on that, leave a comment, and maybe I'll make a networking video in the future. The second option is to log into your router and set up some sort of DHCP reservation. Basically what this does is the computer that's connected to your router, the router looks at your computer's MAC address, which is a specific address assigned to the wireless or ethernet card inside of your computer. It looks at this MAC address and it says, oh, you're supposed to have this IP address. And now you can keep it in DHCP mode and when you connect to the specific network that you've done this for, it'll always give it that specific IP address. Very fun. Well, hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found value in the fact that you can use an emulator to set up companion and you don't even have to purchase a control surface to get started. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below this video. If you want to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting to work through whatever you've got going on, go to crazyamazingdesigns.com training and I'll hope to see you soon or in the next video. Bye-bye.